What's up, everybody? Today we're talking about, you know, we've got to take it a little bit more personal today. It lets you uh, hear a bit of my story when it comes to being an introvert. I know Sundays are usually FJ News or whatever, and I almost did it like it was news, and I'm like, this ain't news. So, <laughs> am I an introvert even? Like, what is going on? Did I become an extrovert through doing YouTube? Like, if you look at my older videos, there's a stark difference in how I present myself. What happened? Is that all exterior? Have I always been the way I am now, etc.? And I, I don't bring this up just as a way of talking about me for however long, but as a way of illustrating to you that your personality, whether you're introvert or extrovert, isn't just like the full defining thing of your life and you don't have to live a life that you don't want to live, etc. And the stories we tell ourselves also have a big effect on what happens in our life and what we do. A lot of this was inspired actually by reading an article on Psychology Today, which I'll link below, called The Introvert-Extrovert Myth, talking about how, you know, everyone's on a spectrum of introvert to extrovert, and it's actually like a bell curve, as are most things. And so that means that most of us are in the middle. Most of us are not like extreme introvert or extrovert. I know there will be hundreds of people in the comments saying that they are the extreme, but statistically, we're probably somewhere in the middle. And you know, on this channel, we have fun. We talk about the stereotypes and the stereotypes only get fun if they're like the extreme and really like turn up the contrast on our experiences, turn up the saturation, if you will, on what it's like to be an introvert looking on the worst things that have ever happened to us and making light of that. Because that's fun. That's, you know, comedy. That's relatable. And if we were, you know, I see comments sometimes that are like, the introverts you're describing in your comedy videos, these are actually like, you know, people who are socially inept and they're not really introverts. And I'm like, yeah, it, it, it's funny. <laughs> I'm just trying to make people laugh. But I also don't want to reinforce stereotypes that make people feel like they can't move outside of some kind of box. So, my journey, like I said, if you look at just the past few years that have been documented on YouTube, my journey, <laughs> that word could be irritating, can it? For a long time, I've always considered myself an introvert, I still consider myself one now, but I used to take it to an extreme where I thought I had like social anxiety or something which is something that I don't actually think I have anymore. I don't know what I was going through. I was just shy, just socially behind maybe. Uh, my birthday's in December and a lot of times the cutoff for school, like what, what year, what grade you go into, is in September. But for some reason with me, where I was, it was the end of the year. So I'm always like the youngest person in my class. And I, so I, everyone was always older than me and there were a few years, like middle school, where I was homeschooled. So those two things together kind of, I think, put me in a position where in addition to my temperament being more introverted, it just made me feel like I was behind. And I still get along much better with people who are younger than me. I don't know why that is. I, I just tend to, not to say like I, I hate being around people who are my age or older, but I don't feel intimidated. I guess that's what it is. I always have felt intimidated by people who are my age or older. And uh, unless they get to be a few years beyond my age. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of social competition thing where I'm not trying to put myself on a hierarchy if people are too far away from me in age. Maybe something like that. Some kind of dominance hierarchy maybe. Uh, I always just felt like I was behind and I couldn't compete with others. Not, not in like a physical way, but like in a social way. And uh, I still did have friends. I still did socialize. And I wasn't really an outcast, but I wasn't ever popular, you know. So I was, you know, as if we're talking about bell curves, I was somewhere in the middle. I wasn't an extreme. But I did have a lot of fear talking to people, putting myself out there, especially if it was talking to strangers, using the phone, going somewhere new, going to a party, going to an event. And it was very difficult. I think I forced myself to do a lot of that stuff just because I prioritized the fear of being embarrassed because I didn't do something to me was worse than the fear of actually doing the thing. So there were, like I even did 
theater in high school as an example, even though it was something I'd never done, it seems to be something that should terrify someone who is a little bit more socially awkward. But I think I just found that was where I could make friends because the theater was full of weird people. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Maybe I've just always liked performing. I mean, it's what I'm doing now in a sense. So, but even going through high school and into college, college I got more introverted, I think, because I couldn't, it was hard for me to relate to other people and I felt overwhelmed because, you know, high school is a smaller community. College, there's a lot more people there and I just, I really felt like I couldn't keep up there because that's when, you know, people were having parties, people were drinking and stuff. And I just felt like there was, there was too much chaos going on. You know, you go to a party with a bunch of college kids. I don't know what's going to happen. Are the cops going to show up? <laughs> I was, I'm, I've always been such a goody two shoes. I think that was part of it too. So I never went to any parties in college and I never really had any friends. Uh, <laughs> like I just didn't try. Uh, there was a, my junior year, was it junior year? That might have been the worst, where I would go to class and not talk to anyone. And I look back in the, at this and I cringe so much because I was just like trying so hard to not get involved. I don't know what was going on with me. I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to get it intertwined with anyone in any way, even if it's just during this class period. There was a history class where we had to get in groups and talk about stuff. And I intentionally just sat there and didn't say anything. And I kind of, I had a hood, a hoodie on and, you know, really embarrassing. <laughs> and so that was probably the, the height or would you call it the depth of my introversion, just withdrawing. And in, in some ways it was unhealthy. It was coming from a place of being frustrated, feeling like I wanted to get out of my shell. I wanted to talk to people, but it just seemed too hard. It seemed too difficult. I couldn't get what I wanted. And a lot of it just came back to low confidence, uh, not thinking very much of myself, in some ways not liking myself at all. It's easy, I think, for us to blur the lines sometimes when we, when we consider ourselves to be extroverts or a certain personality type to confuse it, especially when it is exacerbated by some amount of lack of confidence to be like, I can't do that stuff. I don't want to do that stuff. That stuff is too hard. Why should I have to do that stuff? That's not me. That's not my personality. But if you add in just a little bit of, oh, I'm okay as a human being, I can have confidence, etc., and I have confidence, <laughs> but maybe it does start with the permission. I, I can have confidence. It's okay. Once you get to that point and you can open yourself up a bit, that's when you can realize, oh, I can still, you know, I can be an introvert still, but also go out there and have friends and be liked by other people. I think that is also a part of it. I was like, because I didn't like myself, I thought no one else would like me. And so I cut myself off. So I didn't have to deal with people saying, yeah, you, you're garbage. Why did you put yourself out there? Why did you come to a party? We all hate you, you know? And I was telling myself the story that I was an introvert anyway. So I shouldn't, you know, it's too hard for me to go out there and do stuff. After college, when I went to grad school, I, that was when I really started to open up. And the first year of grad school, I was sort of doing the same thing as college where I was kind of being, you know, not very interactive. It's a lot harder to do that, though, in grad school because you're with the same group of students all the time. So if you do something in one class, they're going to remember it for the rest of your classes <laughs> going forward. And one day, this one student who was, uh, he was, I don't know how much older than me, 15, 20 years older than me, another grad student, he was like, yeah, you didn't see, he just called me out. He's like, you didn't seem to participate much in there. I don't know if you just don't care, like what's going on? <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, I, I do care. Uh, I just did, wasn't saying anything. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and that kind of made me realize, like, it doesn't come across, like, it comes across weird to other people when you're intentionally, like, shutting down as a means of protecting yourself. Like, to me, it was some kind of level of self-preservation so that I didn't get too, I didn't put myself out there enough to take the risk of other people ridiculing me. But it was 
also making me look bad in a way because you know this other student was like well you just you're coming off like a jerk because you're you're shutting down you're not participating and that's when I was like oh maybe I should try a different angle maybe I should just try to put myself out there a bit more and so my second year of grad school do you know where it started really was um I started dressing differently. I started putting on, this is going to sound so nerdy, I started putting on a shirt and tie every day to go to uh, school. And I was, it wasn't like totally nerdy. Like, you know, I tried to do some style, wore some jeans, I tried to look cool. But yeah, I put on a shirt and tie and I think that was a shift because like doing that was like, I want to be looked at. <laughs> like I am trying to look good because I want people to notice me. And so for so long I was trying to hide and it was part of my identity. I was like just trying to keep out of any kind of spotlight, which is ironic considering that I had done theater up to that point. So when I was in high school, I was doing acting, but then when I got into college, I stopped doing acting and focused more on writing. In many ways in my life, I was just trying to retreat and stay out of the spotlight. But second year of grad school, I was like, nah, I'm doing it. and. The funny thing was when I put myself out there more, I realized that people liked me. Like people didn't hate me. I didn't embarrass myself. Now, of course, yeah, there were moments where I embarrassed myself, social situations that were uncomfortable and didn't feel like they were worth it in any way. But it wasn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be. And the more that I put myself out there, the more that I realized, oh, I can participate. I can, you know, do stuff. Now, I didn't like become a party animal. I still didn't really go out often at all. I was still pretty reclusive, but I was making myself do a little bit more. I wasn't like trying to stay cut off from everyone. That was a big turning point for me in my life was gaining the confidence to realize people enjoy being around me. People like it when I show up to an event. People like talking to me. It's important to realize that if you can get beyond some of those mental blocks, and assumptions you made about what would happen if you were a little bit more outgoing, those go away. You know, you realize, oh, those were false assumptions I had. But here's the thing. So grad school, I still look at grad school, specifically that second year, as like one of the best times of my life, right? And it went downhill after that. <laughs> what happened? What happened, Frank? Now, before we continue with the story, let's stop really quick and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. Thanks for sitting through that. Why did things go downhill after grad school? It was because I kind of lost everything that I had built up. I forgot about it. You know, when you go to school, especially grad school, it's a very structured environment. It's not really the real world. And, you know, your school, you can feel like you've risen to the top of the hierarchy there. But as soon as you go into the real world, there's no structure anymore. You're back at the bottom in many ways and it's like oh that was a fantasy world welcome to real life and i lost a lot of confidence like i i struggled to find a job and felt like i didn't have any skills that anyone wanted and i got really down on myself so my self-esteem went through the floor my confidence went through the floor and uh eventually the job that i got which happened to be at my school the, that I had j just graduated from a year before was one that I did not particularly enjoy. My life wasn't one that I enjoyed living <laughs> terribly much. It wasn't awful. Like, you know, it wasn't, it, uh, I don't want to sound like I, I'm complaining about it, but I wasn't living my best life. I wasn't going after the things I really wanted. And in many ways, it's, I just started to tell myself I couldn't. I told myself that was a fluke in grad school. And this is reality right now. Like what I'm doing now where my life is not what I want it to be, this is really what life is like. And that affected my social life and, you know, me thinking of myself as being an extreme introvert and having social anxiety and all that. And that went on for several years, basically until I started my YouTube channel and even after I started it. And um, the same thing happened when I started doing YouTube that happened years before in graduate school is I just put myself out there and realized, oh, people like it. It's okay. Like I, putting myself out there is not the huge risk. And I started to 
build confidence. I started to realize that what I had to offer was of value. And so that's why now I can seem very extroverted to the point where people in the comments are like, Frank, you're not a real introvert. A real introvert couldn't even make videos. That's something I see so often, whether it's 16 personalities and people are like, you know, an INFJ could never make a YouTube channel or even just introvert. An introvert could never get up there and, and make skits and make videos where they talk about whatever topic. But it's not true. Like an intro, there are tons of introverts who do that kind of stuff all the time. I mean, and on the other hand, there are probably some extroverts who, for some reason, uh, you know, their confidence level or whatever, can't get in front of a camera and do stuff. So that's an example of the things we tell ourselves we can't do. And maybe it's just because you don't want to do it, and that's fine. But don't tell yourself you can't do stuff because, you know, of a personality trait. Now, even though I have the confidence and the ability to do stuff and I don't feel nervous about talking to people and I don't have any trace of social anxiety or whatever it was, I still consider myself an introvert because I look at it as preserving energy. I don't want to expend energy, <laughs> socially especially. So if there is some kind of get together, I'm like, do we have to? Oftentimes I will force myself to go, you know, b back before the world shut down in 2020. But uh, there will still be times where I say no. I try to like keep my calendar as clear as possible. I hate committing to things still. And if I have a day where there is like a lot of going out and talking to people, a lot of socializing, I need to have a break. Like I need to just stop. I feel exhausted. I feel like I've been performing I you know because if you've ever been a performer if you've ever been on stage even doing YouTube videos when you're acting and you're like putting energy into a performance you feel really tired afterwards even though you weren't like lifting bales of hay you know you were just being funny on camera afterwards it's like oh, I'm drained it's the same thing for introverts and interacting with people you just feel you feel like it's been a major performance you've gone through and uh, that's still how I feel. So I definitely am an introvert in that sense, but I've like left behind all those things that I thought were introversion. I thought were me, my personality, but they weren't. They were just things I told myself because I didn't have confidence, because I didn't like myself and I didn't think other people would like me. So for all of you out there who are introverts or whatever you consider your personality to be. First of all, it's good to realize that it is a bell curve and we're mostly in the middle. So even though I do consider myself an introvert, I realize I'm probably what, 40% introverted, you know, on this on the scale, I'm probably not uh, who knows, maybe more, but I'm not like in the first percentile of introversion. It's also good to realize that you can do if you want to do stuff, like you look at my channel a few years ago and I wanted to get out of my shell, I told myself I couldn't do it. But you can, like you can one step at a time, you can build yourself up to be able to do whatever you want to do. Your introversion, your personality type doesn't hold you back. And here's another thing, I'm probably never gonna be able to throw a 90 mile an hour fastball the way that a major league baseball pitcher could. But if I really worked on it, I can learn how to throw different pitches. I can learn how to, you know, get it, be accurate with my pitches, even if I'm never gonna be as good as a, a major league pitcher. In the same way, introverts, no matter if you're extremely introverted, you can still learn how to have a full social life, how to be confident, how to do what you want in life. You might not do it as well as, you know, super extrovert. You're never going to be Russell Brand, you know, out there. Oh, look at me, I'm Russell Brand, you know. <laughs> but, but you'll be able to come out of your shell if that's what you want to do. You'll be able to accomplish the things that you want. Now, of course, there are other factors that you might be dealing with, such as real social anxiety, you know, things like that, in which case I would highly encourage you to get into therapy, get some treatment for it. But outside of those kind of disorders, uh, there's uh, so much that we tell ourselves that isn't true. So much that we tell, that we hold on to as our identity 
that is not our identity. So much that we think is our personality, that's not our personality. And that's why I think it's important to stop telling yourself stories because I'm an introvert, because I'm whatever, especially if the stories don't line up with what you want out of life, with what you want to do. That's my piece. Thanks for watching, listening to my story of am I still an introvert? Give it a like if you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know some of your story down below. If you've, you know, if you've had a transformation, if you, maybe you're still struggling with something, put that in the comments and let's see what, uh, what other people have to say. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay cool and attractive. Just like my mug says. Bye-bye. <laughs>